So Dig Double X or Dig 20 is the 20th anniversary reimagined, re-extended, like what, enhanced, mm -hmm. remixed mm -hmm. version of Dig. Dig is originally, it won this festival 20 years ago um, and then went out and just sort of influenced a lot of artists over those years and a lot of people to kind of break the rules and do whatever they wanted because it's the story of two bands that had this wonderful relationship, the Brian Jones Time Massacre and the Dandy Warhols. They happen to be great bands in and of themselves and they're both around today. Um, and uh, it's their story. It's just like sort of inside sort of the collision of art and commerce. They're both on the verge of getting signed. Dandy Warhols get signed to, to Capitol Records and go on to have frustrations and then a huge hit. And so we kind of filmed that over seven years. And then the Brian Jonestown keep dashing every opportunity. Like he's like, I'm the letter writer and they're the postman. Record companies are mafia, but they want to sign him, Anton Newcomb and his band. And, uh, you know, Miranda Lee Richards, who we have in town for the premiere, you know, is a constantly in and out of the band and just trying to help Anton along the way. And, and the band reached that commercial success. But ultimately he wanted to create a revolution. And so this film sort of documents that and uh, documents their lives over seven years very intimately from 2,500 hours of footage. So that was an hour and 45 minute film that kind of blew the roof off this place. And now we're back with a two hour and 25 minute film <laughs> that we very carefully selected 40 minutes of extra footage. Joel Guion from the Brian Jonestown Massacre, who is actually a brilliant writer. Um, we, we got sort of we fell in love with his writing. He has a book coming out called In the Jingle Jangle Jungle mm -hmm. in February, which everyone should buy. It's a, like a tell all inside like the craziest band in the history of music. Um, and we were like, oh my God, maybe Joel will do the, the, do the narration with us. And it was this super collab where we got on a number of Zooms and sort of made a whole new sort of story mm -hmm. um, with the original film in it. And yeah. it brings it up to today. So we're really excited. So go back five years, we got the rights back to the film. And we were like, okay, we have this film back again. It's our, we, our baby came home and like, and like, you know, we should re-release it sometime because we always talked about like all of these amazing scenes that for whatever reason didn't make it because actually when we submitted to Sundance originally 20 years ago, um, they were like, you gotta cut it down a little bit. So we, we, we took some stuff out. And they didn't actually tell us to cut it down. They suggested it, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they were like, we don't wanna tell you what to do. We're mm -hmm. artist friendly, but if you cut 15 minutes out. It'd be great. So we put those back in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We put those plus more, yeah. Because we, cause it's like looking back, it was like, oh my God, there was that moment. And then there was that moment. And like, I'm like oh yeah, didn't Jeff Davies, oh yeah, he did do that. Oh my God. <laughs> um, you know, so it's just sort of like, let's, Let's go back. Let's try to put that stuff in, and and because we because we you know we reached out to Joel and he agreed to do the the void and the other the new narration, we realized we could actually like really seamlessly weave this into the story and tell the, like more of the truth. I mean, the first one was truth. This is just more of it, context, explanation, just like a little bit more. So my nephew, my nephew Eli Owen, who worked on this version, he said, "What what is the bar? Like, what's the standard? What do you what what what? How are you determining what goes in this next version?" And my my answer was context. Is there something that we can add that will give the audience an understanding of why this event that they've come to like see in this other film, or maybe they're seeing it for the first time, but. Why did the fight at the Viper Room happen? Or like, what happened as a result? You know, it was spoofed mm -hmm. on the Gilmore Girls. Like, word for word by Amy Sherman Palladino. Like, we couldn't put that in the original because it didn't happen yet. But we can go, we can like cut it in. And he did such a fantastic job, like intercutting the past and like, mm -hmm. I guess it's the pre, pre dig and post dig all in one. So like Peter from the Dandies is like, I didn't know it would be a depth commercial about, you know, the. David LaChapelle video. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, like yeah. Oh, wait, would anybody know what Depp is? Right, like, like I don't think kids today know what Depp, Depp yeah, kids today don't know what Depp is, but <laughs> if you grew up in the 80s, you know, oh yeah, Depp, yeah, gel, you know? Depp, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been, it's taking something that's like, as, as they said in the UK, savagely funny and making it even funnier. What I, what I think about Dig 20 is it, it, it essentially is Dig. Like if somebody says, oh, do I need to see Dig first? No, you don't, because it's the same, it's, Everything that's in Dig is in Dig 20. It's just, it, 
better, it, it sounds better, it looks better, <laughs> and, it, and it's explained better. And actually, like, you know, going back, you, you know, looking at like, looking at something you did when you were 22, or you know, like, you know, you're like, oh God, I would do that slightly different. Or I guess it was 27 or 28. You know, oh, I would edit that slightly different. Oh, I'm you know. I'm crazy with that. He's yeah. like, you put that in the original. Yeah, I know, I know. And I'm like, I know. Let's fix it. I know. Like, I'm on, like 50 I, now. I know. Can we fix this shit? Like, I, know. I made 10 films. I know. I know. It's like, okay, Andy Love dissolves when she was 29. Now, now she hates them. And I'm like, Can't okay, them. well, that's really difficult if we don't have some sources, you know? <laughs> they call Zach and Eli. Call Get those Zach sources. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. feel like we're getting a little insight into your dynamic. Oh, yeah, for sure. So it, I drove him it, crazy. It go, it go, we, go, we, go, we go hot pretty quick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we love each other. We right? love each other, but it's like, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, like I'm not afraid to tell her, like, He's like what it's the fine. fuck are and you I'm talking like, about? It's not fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be a masterpiece. If they're still here, I want to go with them. I got one. I have no idea where they are. We were living with the film. We were yeah, I mean. We were the bands. The bands were... Like Courtney, every time he broke up with somebody, he moved into my bed. You know, yeah. Anton would sleep on the floor in the living room, and we were all growing up together. It really you helped. Know, I was 23, yeah. and I was 30 when I finished the right. film, you know? So yeah, it was our 20s. I was gonna say, it really helped that we were right out of college. We had no family. We had like, did, you didn't need, you know, we didn't need much. You just had to put food on the table, and like, we had each other, but we didn't have like I know. kids. We didn't yeah. have children. We didn't have kids, we didn't have responsibilities, <laughs> we didn't have a mortgage, we didn't have all that crap, you know? We were like, so we were able to kind of just like throw ourselves into it. I could never do it again. Never, ever, 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 ever. When I got arrested <laughs> in Georgia, like in the film, you know, and my parents, our parents were like, we put them through Yale. Yeah, you know? what, like, is, what, are, what are they what doing? What happened to them? Like, they're gone. <laughs> they're in jail. Like, oh my God. You know, I mean, yeah. it was, there were times it was super dicey. Yeah. But we kept paying for it just by doing like other jobs, other little jobs. Or like making little music money. videos and music selling them to the labels. And, like, that kind of helped a lot. Got signed, so we sold an EPK. That was our first big like, thing. Capital, you know, we would just make it happen. Got a voicemail on my pager. A pager. <laughs> and it was like, so they're gonna buy. Our, they're gonna buy the EPK for five thousand dollars. Yes, <laughs> we yeah. can afford to go on tour with them now. Yeah. 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 I honestly, <laughs> it was such a traumatic day. I can't. I can't for life of me remember if who put it. If we put it, you know, money in, or I know that Brad had been putting money in, and it I was, was happy to be out of jail. Yeah, Andy was on the floor. I mean, we were all just. It was just. It was just one of those. I don't know. One of those really. One of the like at that point, it's probably one of the worst days of my life. You know? It was very dark. Yeah, you have to bail your sister out of jail in Georgia, and you're like, you know, and then I. Oh, for sure. Well, I like. I had. I, were, I had to. The cops took the, the tapes. cops took the tapes, and I, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cops took the tapes, and I had to like basically max out the one credit card I had, like my emergency credit card, to bail her out of jail. And then we were just like, what are we doing? You know. So yeah, it was. But but we did keep shooting. And we we, we, we definitely back. knew enough to keep shooting during all of this because it was like we're, this is. I had to get a lawyer to represent me on drug charges and a lawyer get the tapes back. And we got the tapes back and we were like, fingers crossed, we put it in the machine, like, please. Yeah, we thought what if they degaussed it or yeah, something. We were worried that they would demagnetize the tapes, but they hadn't read that in Banks County, Georgia. So we got them back. As soon as we got them back, it was like, well, that was worth it. Oh my God. It was my car. That was my car. Yeah, was... I was holding the camera just like, what did you just do? He was out he, of control. He, he kept waving his like, think, mason ring, yeah, hoping that they I would think he identify thought, with him in some way. Yeah, he thought it was in the. Yeah, I think he thought if he said like my parents were builders, he thought if he could say like certain, certain mason code words. code words that they would let him go, and it didn't work. Obviously, but yeah, waving the rights was not yeah. something. I There's was actually on board a part with. in the new version that that where he takes his mason ring out and puts it on the table, and uh, and it wasn't in the old version. I was like, oh, that's like I, I, I always notice it now because he's like. I just, I just think this is a really good deal for me. And he puts the mason ring on the table, like when he's talking to TVT Records. I was like, oh, he's gonna put yeah. his mason ring down. Crazy. Yeah, that's after the arrest. Even after that, he was trying to work the mason thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like the the thing about this film is that it, it, um, I, like 27 years after starting it, I, it still brings me joy. Like, yes, cutting this new version was been really hard and there were some almost all nighters and late nights but it makes me laugh and smile and be, and, and like get chills you know so it's like find something that makes you feel that way that's a worthy subject right something that moves you deeply because then it doesn't matter if it, if 
you know, the radio station wants to interview about it, like it's still sustaining you because you're just like engaging with it, right? So if you can find that, like that's my, that's what I'd go for. Yeah, that's my advice. Well, I, I don't, I don't know that anything's, I don't know that I'm grounded. I don't know if my wife or brother would say. Well, I think we keep you grounded. We yeah, bust you. My family, we know. <laughs> my family, um, everybody. Yeah, and and my, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're not, all just artists doing the best we can. You yeah. know, like I'm never, I'm always just struggling to hang in there and make the best possible project. Like every, I'm making a few films right now, and every one of them is so my entire heart and everything I have is in them. Like I love every single person in them and it doesn't matter how many films I make or how, you know, I love that they're beloved and I, and I love to, I love that the work impacts people and I love that Dig has, has born so many artists and that people are so excited for this new version and like, that's lovely. But you know, I made Last Flight Home and that film was almost unconscious. Like I just made it as, a, as an emotional response to my father, our father passing away. And that has gone on to help so many people and like, that is the greatest gift. Being an artist, you know, it's 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 really hard. It's a real, especially a documentary filmmaker. I don't think there's. I mean, and I've heard scripted filmmakers who try docs. They say, "Oh my God, I had no idea, like how hard it is to make a documentary. One like this that's shot over seven years and culled from thousands of hours. You know, tenacity is what you need to hang in there, and it's a double-edged sword because it's exhausting." But it is so gratifying when your when your work actually helps other people, and you feel like I'm not alone, like and that all of this effort and this thing that I believed in that no one would ever put any money into, and nobody cared. Like both bands were not big bands at that time, you know, and no one would invest in this film. And then we finally found an investor, and Anton scared the investor away, <laughs> and you know he wore white and like came up with seven women and threatened their life and. They were like, you're on a mountain of gold, but you know, good luck. We can't get killed by Anton. So they left. Yeah. Um, but we just continued going, you know? And then it now that it lives, and now it lives in so many people's hearts, you know? And so does so does my father and our father. Yeah. I think a reason why the film also still res resonates with me and the footage still resonates with me is that is that the band members were so they were their true authentic selves. Warts and all, you know, Anton you can see all sides of him. You can see him make beautiful music and be a lovely human, and you can see some dark mental illness. You know, Courtney, you could see him being incredibly loving. And humble. And humble. You could see, and here's this guy who could be so arrogant and also so humble. And all of the band members were like, they were honest with us, because we, because we were- With them. With them, we were together. It wasn't like, oh, we're these filmmakers and we're like on some different separate pedestal and they're the subject. We were very much like, Enmeshed, like you know, family. like a family. So, yeah. so that they, their authenticity really comes through, and and that's the number the one film. thing yeah. that you need to have in a film. I think mm -hmm. is authenticity, whether it's scripted or doc. You People gotta just believe it. Feel like they're actually like there, You're you in know, it, yeah. and that they're everybody's real, and it's all happening, and that they too could be there. It's that mm -hmm. that tether, you know, that we hopefully can make a bridge with our cameras for the audience. I'm Zia McCabe. I play in the Dandy Warhols um, since June 94, so almost 30 years. I'm Eric Hedford. Uh, played in the Dandy Warhols drums from 94 to 97. The first drummer. And I'm Miranda Lee Richards, and I got my start in the Brian Jonestown Massacre in 1995. So I think I've used the original drummer. Original drummer. Original first. drummer. Yeah. Original. Original. Both true, but original drummer. That sounds better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Just I want to fix that. <laughs> oh, that's good. Thank you. We were so intimate and unguarded. I mean, reality TV didn't really exist, so there's there's that one layer of like concern that just didn't exist yet. And we were young and just having an absolute ball. And there was this <laughs> reciprocating validation of having somebody film everything that you do makes you feel like you're doing some pretty important work. So we felt like we, we felt like we're really onto something here and these two bands really are gonna have a revolution and this is gonna be fantastic. And so um, but in that, you really over 
expose yourself. And so seeing the, the first iteration come out was most overwhelming. There's this sense of awe of just seeing yourself in a movie, but then there's also this sense of relief as you think of all the things that didn't go in that <laughs> could have. So of course you revisit that 20 years later and you're like, okay, <laughs> now what are we gonna see? What kind of misbehavior or you know, <laughs> snotty remark or catty business about each other? More, that's always really the thing I fear the most is just really trash talking another bandmate or somebody from the other band. That's just, mm -hmm. that stuff doesn't really ever need to be repeated and I certainly don't want a lot of what I said repeated or what I imagine <laughs> I said. It's probably innocent and cute, who knows? Maybe we should just put it all out there. You're trash talking other bands? <laughs> I remember just one time going, there's a lot I could say about Courtney right now, but I'm gonna not and then I'm pretty sure I proceeded to say everything that I wanted to. <laughs> so, that always lingers in my, like, where is that in the archives? Um, but I think really having it now, what's so valuable is to acknowledge that two bands, nobody documents bands at that size other than their buddy. Like you, you don't make this kind of production for a band that statistically is not gonna make it. Statistically, neither band should have made it past another couple of years. And so to have both bands still touring, still putting out music, and still in relationship with each other is phenomenal. And then to have the filmmakers still be able to work together because, you know, they're related, um, and still friends and close, like the, it's just unreal to have everybody still in the picture, in the story, in the game, um, and still feel inspired and still be telling something that's relevant, that people want to see an update of. So, I mean, what an opportunity. I don't even remember ever giving permission <laughs> or saying, also, they just showed up one day, they're carrying cameras around, they're following us around, but they did such a good job of just blending in, being friends, and they just, it was like, yeah, they just became part of everything. And I don't, I don't remember the first time. It did feel, no, but it did feel really organic, the process. And, you know, and it wasn't about permission, it was just like, that sounds fun. Just like every, I mean, every day was a new adventure. Every day was a new experience. Everything was unfolding so fast, so, Adding, um, you know, headlighting a venue locally is like, well, now we've made it. Wait, we're going on tour and we're going to do that in another city? We've definitely made it. We're going to fly somewhere? We're huge. So having like, wait, you want to film us? It just all kind of just um, unfolded as it should have. Yeah, and they stepped in just right at that perfect time. We were just playing bars. Stars. Sparkle. Just yeah. right. You know, they, they, and perfect for them because they were the just kids up. too. They were just out of college and they had all this time in the world to just go on tour. Well, and wasn't it 13, I think it started as like, we're gonna check out a bunch of bands and make a documentary. And Anton was like, mm, actually no, it's two <laughs> bands and it's our story and action. And so they were like, okay, this guy really is pretty convincing. Um, and, and that's, I mean, that's the way I think of it as starting. Do you remember when they first showed up? Yeah. Mm -mm. They just showed I, up. I remember you? driving in a car with Courtney and he was in town. He's like, we're going to my friend Andy's house. She's editing a video of the band. We look really cool and she's really cool. And <laughs> it was something like that. And, and, um, and I remember thinking, I remember it organically morphing from the videos into documenting the bands. And as Zia said, I mean, I felt like both bands were really lucky to be getting documented on that level at that time. And it was a cast of unique characters and there certainly has historically been unique characters in rock and roll, um, but it was literally being at the right place at the right time, I think, for everybody. It was a lot of fun and games and then there was life and death at a few points as well. And uh, you know, there's a lot of stories, a lot of tragic stories in the music business and um, there's a lot of people who, there's been a lot of casualties, and it seemed at a point it could have been a matter of time. So the fact that we're all still here, and that's, that's really the happy ending to all this, is that it's continuing, really, and that people, you know, have been able to go on. <laughs> here, 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 yep, so. I have some great, great memories um, of 
wild adventures with Andy on the tour bus um, in Europe and <laughs> some just really fantastic, charming stories. And um, that's, a, you know, it's part, of, it's part of our history. So it wasn't just them documenting us, it was them becoming part of our, of our stories. Andy filmed my wedding, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need to get it moved on to a DVD. Please do. No, seriously. It's like to hear this, it's just like, yeah, we had such a good time. Oh, man. Such a fucking good time Unreal. together. Unreal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you, Andy, can you tell us, how do you decide, like, who you're going to film and track when they're going on different tours? throughout the filming process. It's like a gut instinct thing, but the dandies were rising and they were getting these opportunities and we were like, let's up the format, let's get on tour with them, let's go. And they made a bunk for me and we just stayed up all night <laughs> and had a great time. We didn't sleep a lot. We didn't we sleep, sleep a lot, sleeping. but we had a really good time. Lots of laughing. Yeah, lots of laughing. <laughs> the fans were going crazy and the band was so good. And I just remember filming one show, I think it was Pink Pop in the, in the Netherlands. Sure. And I felt like, I understood what a band member feels, like the energy that is shared on stage. When you're, it's literally, I mean, I'm sorry, but it is kind of like sex in that way. Yeah. Where it's kind of like you're exchanging this energy that is just so palpable. Well, you have a few musicians that get to amplify their vibe, their sound, their message, their feelings, and it gets reciprocated by numbers of bodies. But Coming also back. the songs evolve and yeah. everybody just like builds it up it's together. It's a huge emotional looks towards the drummer and It's then, crazy. Yeah, and it's this, this, and I'm doing that with the camera, you know? So it was all part of this, it was one body, you know? And that is the feeling I think people have when they see this film, you know? It's awesome. not like people standing back filming. It's like we're in the band. Embedded you know? recording. Yes, guys let us in. Yeah. We're all doing this together. There were cameras in everyone's face for a, like a decade. But we also... <laughs> <laughs> but we did get was, cameras that were so amazing. low light sensitive, even back then. Like that little... That's how spy all the little... Is that spy the on my belt? Yeah. That's how you yeah. got <laughs> so much of... Uh, it's yeah. true, so on the spy cams. So that we wouldn't cams. put a light on you. Yeah. You know, so we wouldn't yeah, yeah, ruin yeah. it. Yeah. 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 It that was like we were just there hanging out. Yeah, we were just there hanging out. Yeah, it Yeah, it was totally nice. And we felt that way. We were like, literally felt we were documenting the revolution. And in a way, we have. Full revolution is a big circle. One of them at least. Here we are. Here we are. Full revolution. Full revolution. Oh, we revolved. Yes. <laughs> I want to have more evolution. Evolution. <laughs> we're, we're no more revolution. Too, yeah. <laughs> Love was always there. And even when things got crazy and it was like actually a little bit scary and you're like, I don't want them anywhere near. Like Anton did fly off at one point to a point where it was you didn't know what he was going to yeah. do. Right. Well, you know? sometimes you have to take space from family members, too. You know, when they're being <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just take a little space. That doesn't mean yeah. you don't love them. But it was the sense of, like, you know, both bands had this sort of license to be exactly who they were with each other, and each was were each other's, like, inspiration and muse. True. You know? Yeah. That I didn't have female peers or even really male peers in the exact combination of what I was doing, but to, I was afraid if I did, I would compare myself to them and come up short and that that would make me too insecure to proceed. Mm -hmm. So for me, having it just be nobody to compare it to and just be this made up thing of a girl with keyboards in the, you know, playing bass with your right hand and percussion with your left, even though you're right handed. And all of the stuff was just a little bit like off and, and backwards and unique, which made it me not feel like I had to compare myself to anyone. Mm -hmm. And so that part was nice. I didn't think of being an example until a fair bit later. La Anton's new line in this one that wasn't in the original where he says, he says, it doesn't matter if your friends are retarded and everybody thinks you're insane. As long as you, as long as you don't give up, you can do anything you want. And that's what this film is going to show. If you don't, unless you, unless you, unless you, don't, you don't, if you don't fuck, fuck it, it up. up. <laughs> to me, I'm like, okay. And then he's like, you got an ID? Let's go. I'm going to go pawn my, my guitar. guitar. But, anyway, okay. but anyway, it's an amazing moment. But that line is true. <laughs> you can do anything you want. You can break all the rules. If you don't give up, you and might. And that's the truth. Through, you know? yeah. That's actually what Sundance is all about, too. It's in there somewhere. It's a hard day. It's a hard day. <laughs>